Hi folks, welcome to the channel. Um, I just wanted to have a, a general discussion on basically Varroa and the problems that I'm getting at the moment. Well, when I say problems, they're not really problems, but the presence of more mites in the hive than I actually want and which I believe could be detrimental. Now the weather conditions have been unseasonably warm for sure, uh, especially in Scotland. Uh, we normally got lots of rain and this time of year it's absolutely freezing, but it's going up and down the temperature, get, uh, uh, the temperature range. Is at the moment we're still in single figures and the weather's not that good. Um, it's starting to rain again. Um, my idea was today to go out and do the second round or the second batch of varroa treatment on the hive. So um, I've given up on that today due to the shitty weather conditions. So my findings this year uh, and me being a first year beekeeper uh, and the learning curve is straight up. Um, I've discovered a few things, especially to do with treatments. Now my findings are is uh, initially at the end of the season, around about the end of August, beginning of September, I put Apivar strips on uh, with a miticide. Um, so they did actually work quite well because the initial drop was quite big. Uh, and therefore uh, the showing on the sticky board was quite extensive. So I thought, great. Um, and I left the Apovar strips in for 56 days, I believe it was, which is prescribed on the packaging. Um, so I did that. And I also left it for approximately a month um, so that the strips could do their thing. Uh, what I have found is, is that uh, on checking the sticky board this time, um, I'm now, or I discovered that I had 15 Varroa. Now I'm on a double brood box and because of the unseasonably warm weather, um, they're toppers, they're absolutely full of bees and they seem to be healthy enough. And I've also discovered it would seem that uh, they're still or were brooding up till recently. Um, Therefore, I sort of predicted that the Varroa count would still be high if there was still brood in the hive itself. So I then sort of thought about it um, and then decided to embark on OAV and to get them blasted and clean up the rest of the mites. Now, of course, dosage has been a little bit hit or miss um, I certainly went for four grams for two deeps um, and they, it seemed to work quite well uh, but once again uh, I'm starting to get Varroa showing on the sticky boards. I mean it's only probably about five so I would say that the Apivar and the initial OAV uh, that was done is starting to clean it up and there are less and less. I'm hoping now with the weather getting as cold as it is over the next few weeks that I will hopefully find a window in that weather. Um, I, it comes up a little bit so I can, the, the cluster loosens up so that I can get in there again and give them another uh, approximately four rounds of OAV. Of course it then brings me back to again the dosage rate. As I said I'm currently on four grams. Um, and I'm debating on Weaver to up this to six grams. So really I'm asking is anybody out there who's experiencing the same as me and what's your dosage levels? Let me know in the uh, comments below uh, because I need to try and find uh, middle ground as far as the dosage is concerned. <coughs> Moving on slightly, um, it really brings me on to the next thing which uh, I mentioned in previous video was uh, I'm going to have a treatment free hive uh, for 2023. Now I'm going to run this in isolation away from my apiary uh, in an off-site apiary somewhere um, which I'm trying to define now and bolt down so that I can move them. What I'm looking at is 
possibly catching a feral swarm uh, because obviously a feral swarm's been out there and to some degree, do they have resistance? Um, so it's interesting. So hopefully when the March stroke April, when the swarm season comes in, I'll be able to capture a swarm. And what I intend to do is over a series of the next season, 2023, I'm gonna record all my findings as far as treatment free is concerned. Now I know from the past that uh, it's been contentious and I wanna approach it from a more methodical angle by running uh, a treatment free hive and noting down everything that happens. Now there is a possibility that the hive won't survive, but I kind of think about it, if it's a feral swarm, then they've been out there without the assistance of beekeepers, without them getting shoved into a hive uh, under certain conditions. So that's my intention. So as far as efficacy and obviously treatments, I have my, uh, my treatment plan, as you can see here. Um, this is based on the Randy Oliver model, uh, which is very thorough and certainly has had lots of research. I'm finding that I have to change things and just massage it, move it left and right, depending on uh, the season, depending on the weather. Because last year, or yeah, last year, that it was uh, unseasonably warm, then obviously it's changed. So I'm now looking at the next oxalic acid treatment. Now that's my priority at the moment and clean them up. Um, hopefully it'll be the last treatment prior to the 2023 season starting. So it'll be something that uh, will be interesting to, to note, especially when they start to increase and I'll be able to get in the hive and have a look. Another thing that I've noticed as well, which is quite strange, um, and I've found there's drones still in the hive. Now, I was watching YouTube the other day and it was a Fred Dunn Q&A. And I did notice in there that uh, there was a, a lass that wrote into him and had the same situation as me, having or finding drones in the hive or on the landing board. Um, and it's unusual for this time of year, so I've been led to believe. The other thing that came into it, which was quite worrying, uh, and I'm sure this isn't the case, that the only reason drones are appearing is that we have drone laying workers and we are queenless. I don't believe this. Um, and I've found that the drones that are produced are still hefty fellas. They're not skinny, they're not um, underdeveloped. They are fully developed drones. So it's interesting uh, and certainly by the beginning of the next season, it will be quite useful to get in the hive and have a look what's in there, especially drone levels. What I intend to do this year is to put drone cone in. Uh, drone cone because I want to, because I'm out of a second hive and it will be a different generation or a different, um, how can I say, um, diverse background. Um, I'm hoping that producing drones for the area will support the other hive as well, uh, so I don't get too much or any crossbreeding. Um, because the temperament at the moment and the way the bees act once you're working them, um, I found it to, to be fairly productive. And this year will be an acid test to see how much honey can be produced. And also they're of good temperament, which is even better for me. Um, that's the stock I want. Uh, especially in this locale when uh, I'm quite close to, to people uh, in terms of neighbours. Because uh, the last thing I want is, is a neighbours obviously to kick off and get stung to hell. So I'm, I'm very wary of this. So hence why I'm working hard towards an offsite apiary or apiaries. Uh, one I've identified and I've shown it in earlier uh, videos. And it's way out of the way. Well, not way out of the way. It's about three miles out in the countryside. Uh, it's a piece of old farmland uh, which is available and I've spoken to the owner and he's been very courteous and uh, he's let me use it. So for my treatment free hive, I'm going to put it there uh, as soon as I possibly can in the new part of the season. So I'm going to have to put word out on my Facebook group to try and identify if there's any swarms that appear in people's gardens. 
so that I can go and grab them. And that will be my uh, test bed for treatment free. So coming back to it, um, again, I would welcome any comments, especially on uh, royal treatment, efficacy and other products that people have found successful. What I have found is, is that the, um, the Apovar has been less effective. Uh, the eff efficacy has been low uh, and it's been a trend across the board. I've been noticing from um, uh, other channels that they've experienced that. Anyway, so that's the th that's the aim. So what I would say to anybody now is, is uh, watching this and please comment. Um, see if, you know, I can highlight if anybody's getting the same problems as me this late in the season. So that's what I intend to do. So that's about it for the video. It was a quick one. Uh, thanks for looking in. Please like, subscribe, comment. Uh, I have noticed as well that some folk that aren't watching have not subscribed. So please subscribe and it'll be great. And you'll be able to support our endeavors in our second year of beekeeping. So without further ado, I will uh, sign off and I'll see you on the next video. So take it easy, happy new year and cheerio folks.